Hi, I'm Sophie Jobet. I am a lecturer in contemporary history at the Aix Marseille University. Before I begin, I would like uh, first of all to thank Valérie Schaeffer for having managed to keep the organization of the meeting online despite the impossibility of traveling. In this presentation, I'm going to share with you the reflection work undertaken in the framework of the working group in collaboration with Federico Nani, who is research data scientist at the Alan Turing Institute. Helle Jensen and Nicola Bingham had also contributed to this reflection. So, the aim is to share a first approach about how to build a methodology for analyzing transnational events online. To take up the challenge of constructing a methodology to study the online traces of transnational events, we must first overcome several obstacles. The first of them is the fact that we have to deal with a plurality of materials. We will constitute mixed corpora by combining web sources, web archive sources, other bond digital materials, media archives such as television and complementary sources such as the oral inquiry. In this condition, how to compare various and mixed corpora based on the web and on the web archives? And which tools? The second difficulty is related to the question of temporality. Therefore, how can the chronological dimension could be taken into account? How to date transnational events? It means on the basis of what criteria can we consider when the event begins or when it ends? Last but not least, how to manage with multilingualism. Several avenues of investigation to be opened by mobilizing the state of the art. To take up this methodological challenge, we have opened two major projects. On the one hand, at the level of the comparison of transnational events, and on the other end, of the level of the analysis of sources coming from the web itself and archived web. So, our first point concerns the way to analyze an online transnational event basing on web archive material or not. Depending on the discipline and field of research, the definition of the notion of event and the way it is studied will considerably vary. In this way, Sprunioli and Tonelli have shown that inside the NLP community, each discipline gives its own definition of what an event is. Understanding what makes an event requires an articulation of temporalities and special scales. Concerning temporalities, the first level is to focus on the time of the event, which corresponds to the Brodel's short time. The aim is to identify the precise period, the actors, the nature of what contemporaries consider to be an exception. In a Brodelian approach, the understanding of the event is highlighted by putting into perspective the phenomenon observed over a longer period of time. First, the time frame of the web. For example, I have studied the online commemorations of the Algerian War of Independence on the French web archives by comparing the remembrances of the 40th anniversary in 2001 and the 50th in 2011. With regard to COVID-19, the event can be studied in the light of major productions specific to other pandemics such as H1N1 influenza in 2009. For example, during the first lockdown in France, the school break had given rise to the idea and the expression of continuity pedagogique, pedagogical continuity. It seemed new, but it was not the case. This had already been tried out in 2011, as this INA web archive shows us. Another instance in France is the, the debate related to the massive purchase of H1N1 vaccines by the government in 2009. Several of debates that had been dormant in during the 2000s have returned with great intensity in 2020. Second, the recent event can be studied with regard to the pre-web period. The aim here is to study the phenomenon over a longer period of time. In the case of COVID, 
the cultural and media projection inherited from the 20th century in connection with the history of pandemics make it possible to better understand the online transformations. Studying a transnational online event by articulating short time, web time and pre-web time allows us to better define the singularity of the contemporary event by highlighting ruptures and continuities. At the same time, to build a general analytical framework from a transnational historical analysis, it is essential to take into consideration the dynamics of globalization in relation to the issues of global history. A main point lies in the definition of the units of comparison. This raises several aspects that need to be made explicit in our approach. How are they constructed? Time and space, national, regional, periodization and contextualized. Who and why can they be compared? What are the connections between the units? How have they interacted and impacted each other? Was there any inspiration, collaboration across the spaces defined for the different units? What are the global structures that the different cases are all embedded in and how do they impact them differently and why? On this question, we have already started the first state of the art which allows us to nourish our own collective reflection. For instance, the concept of intercultural transfers proposed by Adam Thomas in his research can be uh, considered and reused in our own project. The questions described concern the framework for analyzing the event. This brings us to our second point devoted to the methodological issues related to the study of corpora from the living web and the archived web. The second challenge is linked with the analysis of a born and reborn digital material. We have a first set of challenges to take up in order to constitute a coherent corpus dedicated to each transnational event. To build this corpora, we have to overcome many obstacles, such as to identify content in web archives, as all archives don't allow search by keyword. In this aim, we have to be able to describe the corpus, statistics, etc., to get an overview in order to take the decisions that enable it to be supplemented or, in the contrary, restricted. Data collection also questions our own representation and especially about what does a transnational corpus based on metadata or uh, derived data should look like. Once the corpora will be constituted, we will be able to deploy a mixed quantitative and qualitative analysis method. From a quantitative point of view, we will rely on experiments already carried out in progress. Here we will work in conjunction with the working group devoted to the tools. A first list of quantitative methods can be already drawn up. First, web mapping. A group headed by Niels is working on this issue and uh, we know how it is hard to use web graph in web archive thanks to the work of Zeynep Pelivan or Quentin Rubé. Second, data extraction and semantic analysis with the challenge of taking diachrony into account. Many experimentation in progress can be useful. For instance, I am working on a corpus of uh, videos from the INA archives about protest of health professionals in France in the last year. We have extracted the HTML files, the metadata and voice over text of the video to be analyzed. Another instance applied into web itself is the study of the usefulness of semantic web resources, for instance, Wikidata, to obtain structured representation of events, participants, locations across languages. Finally, the study of the reliability of entity-linked technologies for identifying mentions of people, places, time information, textual content on the web as signals for discussions around an event can be also reused. Third, we will have to define criteria for the comparison of various corpuses coming from the different national web spheres. 
periodization, vocabulary, types of actor, types of networks, etc. Here, the underlying question is how to compare different corpora related to case studies. An approach could be to compare network of relations of participants across languages. In the same time, we have to think about qualitative approaches such as contextualizing the national web sphere and the corpus, in particular the archiving of collections dedicated to the events, target case studies and build comparison criteria based on qualitative methods. This may include semiological analysis, discourse analysis, sentiments, visual analysis, and collection of complementary sources from creators of specific content. Finally, despite the many challenges and uh, questions, the answers are likely to emerge in the course of the research. First of all, according to the accessibility of the corpora and also, of course, according to the tools we will be able to use. Thank you for your attention and now Federico and I will be happy to answer to any question you may have. Thank you.